I'm a biologist. And today I want to tell you a possible story that's pieced from the research. I think this story and my research can teach us some important lessons about life. And we have part of the story, but not all of it. And the story changes based on new information. The story begins about 10,000 years ago in Anatolia, which we know of as Turkey. A baby was born in that region with a new mutation that the world had not yet seen in a gene called Conexin 26. This gene is on the long arm of chromosome 13, and it tells the body how to make an important protein. This protein is expressed on the surfaces throughout the body, it's expressed on the skin, and it's also found in the cochlea of the inner ear. That mutation is called 35 del G. That baby was the first carrier and was not deaf. I wish I could go back in time and tell this person that someday his or her allele would someday increase in frequency and spread to almost 4% of the European American population. Very soon after the first carrier of 35 Del G, the first deaf baby would have been born. And that baby would have had two copies of 35 Del G. This deaf person would have grown up to look just like everyone else. I wonder what his or her life might have been like. Would the deaf person have integrated with the village? We don't know. But thinking about the population structure in ancient Anatolia 10,000 years ago, people were living in small, isolated communities. They might have been nomadic and maybe even early agrarian villages. Groups were regularly in flux, often struggling against starvation and warfare. Sometimes communities grew and broke off to form new groups. If a community were founded by carriers of 35 Del G, then that new community would have had many deaf people. Geneticists call this the founder effect. Did that happen? I really think so, looking at the world today. There are many examples like that right now in the world. And let's talk about one, the Al Said Bedouins in Israel. They happen to be not far from Turkey. That tribe was founded by four men, Two of the men carried the 35 Del G allele. And now many Bedouins in that village are deaf. The deaf villagers are equal participants in the Bedouin village. The Bedouins have developed their own sign language called ABSL. And it's increasing in complexity and now it's in its third generation. It's also an exciting topic of study by linguists. All the villagers know that sign language, and it doesn't seem to be a stigma at all against being deaf. They can marry inside and outside the village, and it's a wonderful place to be deaf. Let's get back to my story. Remember that we were at about 10,000 years ago, but let's fast forward about 8,000 years. It's now in the 20th century BC, and we're still in Anatolia in a city called Hattusha. 4,000 years ago, Hattusha was the capital of the Hittite Empire. The Hittites were a large civilization that occupied much of Anatolia. They were reputedly peaceful, although Rarely are civilizations ever really so. But the Hittite civilization lasted for more than a thousand years. In 1906, a German archaeologist named Hugo Winkler, well, and actually I, I doubt he was any relation to the Fonz, Henry Winkler, but Hugo Winkler uncovered thousands of clay tablets at Hattusha. On the tablets were cuneiform symbols that no one really understood at first. It took many people many years to decipher them. On those tablets, the Hittites mentioned deaf servants to the king 
and hinted at sign language and deaf families. We don't really know why the Hittite kings liked having deaf servants. Maybe the royal family felt that the servants couldn't overhear their secrets and repeat them to others. I like to think that maybe deaf people were common in the Hittite civilization. And they are, like the Bedouins, deaf people incorporated into Hittite society. I wish I could say that all ancient societies were like that for deaf people. But unfortunately, not all societies were so friendly. In the third century BC, ancient Greek philosophers described deaf people in the Cratylus. They observed that deaf people used their hands to communicate, even though they did not speak. But they didn't believe that they were using a language, and they came to the bizarre conclusion that deaf people were incapable of intelligent thought. But what did they know? The ancient Romans were really known for being pragmatic. A long time ago, ancient Roman law was collated into a large volume called the Corpus Juris Civilis. And this stratified deaf people into four groups based on their verbal communication ability. Each tier had a different ability to conduct business contracts. Contracts at the time had to be verbal because most people couldn't read or write. And so deaf people were at the lowest tier and they weren't able to conduct business transactions or inherit property. Now let me finish my story. The 35 Del G allele spread from Anatolia throughout Europe. It concentrated in the Mediterranean and also in Spain. Europeans settled the Americas and they brought 35 Del G with them. The Spanish conquistadors introduced 35 Del G into the Mexican population. And that's how 35 Del G is spread throughout the world today. My story leaves a nagging question, though. Why and how did the frequency of 35 Del G increase from that one baby born with it 10,000 years ago, a tiny infinitesimal percentage of the population, to almost 4%? Is it because the Hittites were so wildly successful at agriculture and warfare that they spread their genes far and wide through population expansion? No, I, I don't think that's the reason. There are two very similar mutations in Connexin 26 that also increased in frequency and in the same way. 167 Del T is found in the Ashkenazi Jewish population, and that's spread throughout that population. 235 Del C has spread throughout the Asian population. All three of them increased in frequency in their respective groups. But only 35 Del G is probably associated with the Hittites. So it's definitely not the success of the Hittites that explains the frequency of the Connexin 26 mutation. It has to be something else. And it's probably something powerful to make it spread. Biology and history gives us a possible reason. I know you know about dysentery. It's caused by Shigella. It's a horrible disease that spread through drinking contaminated water. And I know Ted is supposed to be a polite company, but please pardon me for talking about this. Shigella causes grossly bloody, purulent diarrhea, and a lot of people have died from it. Many people don't realize that the American Civil War, dysentery killed more soldiers than bullets. We know that in Petri dishes in the laboratory, Shigella requires Connexin 26 to infect cells. If we apply this biology to people, if a person drank contaminated water, Shigella would bind to Connexin 26 in the gut, beginning a horrible infection. But if Connexin 26 isn't present, like if a person had 35 Del G, then the bacillus wouldn't have anything to bind to and that person would be resistant to dysentery. Let's think back to when the first cities were formed. We really didn't understand sanitation and the benefits of clean water, and people got sick quite a bit. Dysentery was always a problem for armies if they stayed in one place for too long. 
even a slight resistance to dysentery would be enough positive pressure to increase the frequency of the 35 del G allele from just one person to almost 4% of the population. It also explains the spread of the other two Connexin 26 mutations that I mentioned before, the 167 del T in the Ashkenazi Jewish population and the 235 del C in the Asian population. I'm telling you what I think is a fascinating journey of 35 del G, not only as a biologist, but as a human being. If you don't remember any of my story, that's okay but I hope you remember two lessons from it that I consider important. One lesson is not to blame people for their genetics. American society struggles with a long history of eugenics. I'm sorry to say that I think it's still in our culture. We've regulated marriage and we've sterilized people. We all carry mutations. Our genome is fingerprinted with our long struggle to survive. Malaria is powerful and it's powerfully imprinted in our genome and given us sickle cell anemia. Malaria has killed more people than any other disease ever. Carriers of the sickle cell anemia resist malaria. And I'm sure you recognize the picture behind me. Tutankhamun may have died from malaria more than 3,000 years ago. Mother Nature took no pity on the pharaoh. Maybe dysentery has also imprinted our genome. Our second moral is how we've decided as a society to incorporate our genetic diversity. In American culture, deafness and other genetic diversity is medicalized and treated expensively, including by surgery. The treatment communicates to the person that he or she is broken and is of low worth. Can we all be like the Al Said Bedouins? and accept and assimilate genetic diversity. We could all learn just a little bit of sign language. I hope you remember these lessons. And thank you for watching.